Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Money podcast, your source for everything money. I'm your host, Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, moneymatterstoptips.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today is a very special reunion 2020 episode. What is that? That's when I bring on a guest I had on in the past, and I like him so much I had to bring him right on back. Uh, so today's guest is Brian Schachter, and he's the Director of Strategic Investments over at Watermark Retirement Communities. Brian, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. Oh, man, we're back. Happy 2020. I like to say we got the, the, the podcast family reunion going on, um, and I'm excited to get into uh, today's topic. So we're going to get some updates for you uh, on the senior uh, from you on the senior housing market, and, um, and what a better what, can't think of a better person to do it. Um, but before we do that, let's get a little bit further into uh, what you're doing over at Watermark Retirement Community. So first, just tell us a little bit more about the company, please. Sure. So uh, Watermark is based Tucson, Arizona, uh, over a 30-year history of owning and operating senior housing uh, communities across multiple states. So today we have uh, 63 communities, including a few projects that are finalizing development in the next few months across 21 states, about 11,000 beds under management. The company is currently considered to be the 13th largest senior housing operator in the country based on uh, beds under management, and my role is heading up acquisitions and developments for the company. So I work on all new business, um, acquisitions, developments, uh, dispositions, joint venture negotiations, loan negotiations, et cetera, everything that from start to finish from getting a project that we've identified and doing the market and financial feasibility through uh, closing construction loans or acquisition loans and then ultimately uh, bringing in capital partners to provide the funding for the projects. So, um, and that's why I said, I mean, you guys are huge, number one. Lots of beds, lots of communities, and uh, you have you have a unique vantage point. Um, so that being said, let's get into um, senior market, uh, the senior housing market and uh, its current state. So tell us a little bit more about what's going on, please. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, there's been a lot of, um, you know, articles coming out about some of the headwinds within our industry. So a few of the big ones, you know, there's been – kind of a flood of capital into our market. You know, folks saw how well senior housing did through the recession. And so, you know, private equity and REITs that really weren't investing in senior housing prior to like 2008, 2009 started uh, playing in our space, you know, in the last, you know, call it five to seven years. And that's continued to heat up as, you know, um, returns on other asset classes like multifamily or commercial office really weren't, um, you know, getting to the levels that they were seeking. So we've seen a number of groups that have entered our space, both on the development and uh, investment side, really looking to partner with, you know, groups like Watermark that have, you know, a long track record of senior housing operating experience and success. So we're well positioned on that front. But what it's doing is, you know, certainly changing some of the dynamics of the industry. So we're dealing with you know, oversupply in certain markets where there's been a lot of construction activity over the last three to five years, um, you know, and the demand hasn't quite caught up to there. Uh, the other thing that we're seeing is, you know, just a different view of how these investments are intended to go. So if you look at a private equity company, you know, they're used to maybe commercial office or multifamily or student housing that, you know, oftentimes can have a very quick lease up and, you know, whole period where they can invest and sell within a three- to five-year time frame. And senior housing is just not necessarily that way. Sometimes it takes longer to, you know, lease up a building. It, it could be a multi-year process that you're constructing it over a couple years, leasing it up over a few years, and getting it to season to the point where it makes sense to then look to sell uh, to the next buyer. So sometimes those whole periods are a little bit longer in senior housing, and there's been some, some uh, you know, discussion about that and, scrutiny from you know, private equity that really aren't accustomed to, you know, the operational intensities of um, of senior housing necessarily. The other thing that we're, you know, Watermark, as I said, is across 21 states. You know, probably about half of those have minimum wage increases that, that have taken effect. In a number of other states, those have, you know, been talked about or being contemplated. And so, you know, we're, we have obviously a heavy 
operational, um, you know, staff level at each community. And so, you know, people are across a, a wide spectrum of wage rates and so minimum wage increases and, you know, low unemployment absolutely affect us in a lot of different ways. And so, you know, it's not just about, you know, a server that's making minimum wage and their, their rate goes up, but it's also all the people that uh, were making a certain amount relative to minimum wage prior to the increase. So what we call that is wage compression. So we're just, you know, kind of seeing the ripple effect of, you know, wage changes and low unemployment. So people being able to be pretty selective in what, um, what jobs they want to do. And so that, you know, is putting pressure on the expense side of things. Um, you know, the, the supply question is really at times putting a, putting pressure on the rate side of things because, you know, you're not in a position to really raise rates, you know, if your occupancy isn't high or if there's, you know, a new competitor that's coming in that maybe is nicer or better located than you. So there's just a lot of different uh, factors that we're dealing with in every aspect of our business, um, and those will continue to evolve. You know, again, we're well positioned, um, you know, with our track record and, you know, kind of diversification across, you know, different types of retirement communities and across multiple states. But, um, you know, there's no question that we deal with all of these challenge on a, challenges on a daily basis. Wow, you got a, you're, you're dealing with a lot of moving pieces on this one, Brian. So you're, you're not busy in 2020. Yeah, right. Oh, my gosh. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> let's uh let so they're getting you from all ends on this one. So let's let's go a little bit further into the uh into private equity entering the space. So you mentioned there's oversupply in some markets, there are not not all but in some markets and um that being said, do you uh what do you, how do you see this playing out? Not asking you to have the crystal ball, but how do you see this playing out with people kind of jumping on the bandwagon so to speak uh to you know to try and to try and chase those margins? Yeah, it, it's really going to come down to whether people have the patience for, mm. um, you know, the volatility of senior housing. So, you know, we'll see some groups that you know, understand or learn, you know, how it likely is to go within this space. And over time, we'll get more comfortable that it's not going to be, you know, a straight line from start to finish necessarily. So, you know, some groups will get up to speed and really get comfortable with that. And, you know, it might be that mm. some groups just aren't the right fit for senior housing. So we'll see some mm. folks move in, some folks move out. We've already seen that. You know, there's been a couple of groups that we've bought properties from where, you know, they had been pretty gung-ho on building senior housing. And then, you know, after a few years of doing it, they've just exited the space entirely because they just weren't, you know, well-equipped for it or weren't interested in kind of the operational intensity of it. So, you know, it, it, it it's an ongoing thing, but you know, mm-hmm. there's there was an article in Senior Housing News this week specifically about this, which you know was getting a lot of discussion internally within Watermark because you know we work with seven or eight different capital partners. Some are new to the space, some have been at this for a long time. So you see, you know, all different types of um, personalities and views on how these things are supposed to play out. So it, it, it is definitely a fascinating time within the industry. You know, for Watermark specifically. Uh, we've got a lot of projects that have all kind of come together at the same time. You know, there was caught five developments that we had been working on for the last three or four years. And in a perfect world, they would have spread out a little bit better, you know, from a scheduled perspective. But as it turned out, we have $750 million of development that is all opening in about a six-month stretch. So we opened one here in Tucson just in the last couple months. Uh, we have a big project in New York City that's opening in April uh, one in Los Angeles that's opening in June or July, and then one in Napa Valley that's <laughs> opening in May or June, as well as one in San Ramon, California, which is a little bit smaller deal, but uh, may have been the most complicated of all of them for a number of reasons. So it, it's just an interesting time within our company, um, and we're excited about those projects reaching the finish line. But then you know, looking to the future, we also have a, a pretty healthy development pipeline, again, working with some great folks that – you know, in some cases are newly entering the space and really interested to work with uh, groups like ours, but, you know, there's going to be a, a learning curve for them as well just to, you know, understand the, you know, as I said, the operational intensity, the leaked up schedule, all the things that, you know, we've been dealing with for 30 plus years. 
Man, that's awesome. And when you, when you were listing those, I'm like, oh, my gosh, you combine all of those openings with what you're getting from, obviously, the wage press, what you're getting from the others. I mean, I'm like, oh, my head is spinning just listening to you, Brian. Uh, so so that being said, uh, I'm like, oh, man, thank God I podcast. It's cool. Uh, it's all good. Uh, so, so that being that being said, uh, Brian, if somebody's listening to this and they want to learn more about um, Watermark Retirement Communities, uh, what's the best way or to connect? What's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, they can always reach out to me directly. Um, you know, our website is obviously a, got some good info on, you know, the history of the company, but, you know, I have materials that show, you know, what we've done, where we've been, where we're headed. Um, my email address is uh, Brian, B-R-Y-A-N, at uh, freshwatergroup.com. So Freshwater Group is just the development and acquisitions arm of the company. Um, or, you know, on Facebook uh, or LinkedIn, they can always reach out to me, uh, Brian Schachter. But, you know, we, we're we a very cards-on-the-table company. You know, I'm uh, open to discussing all the positives that we're seeing, all the, the, the challenges that we're working through, and um, there are a lot of them on both sides of the equation. So, it's an exciting time, you know, just to add to the complexity that uh, of all the projects that I mentioned to you, we we're actually in the final stages of completing a sale of half the company to a group out of Singapore. So basically a major investment into Watermark, both, you know, to pave the way for the next round of growth or reshaping of our portfolio, but also over time looking at international opportunities like in Asia, um, Europe, you know, all over the place where, this partner of ours, Keppel Capital, has um, already has you know relationships and, and experience and uh, and capital to go out and look at projects that we wouldn't have looked at on our own. Man, that's exciting! Um, great stuff. Love to hear it. Love to hear what's going on uh, with you, of course, and with uh, Watermark Retirement Communities and all the great work you're doing there. So awesome stuff! Um, and, and so thank you for coming on the show first. And uh, to the audience, as always, thank you for uh, for listening. Without you, there's no there's no uh, show. So keep listening. Subscribe. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, uh, Mission Matters Money. Uh, then be sure to subscribe to that channel, but also give us some comments in there. Love to hear your thoughts on what's going on uh, in retirement, community housing, or in real estate in general. Give us some comments. Love to keep the conversation going. Don't let it stop here. Um, and Brian, thanks again for coming on the show. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.